Roger, scientists in general, but mathematicians in particular, use words like beauty, symmetry, elegance. And they're very evocative terms. But what do they really mean and how are they expressed? And how do you, as a great mathematician, how do you feel about that? Well, beauty is certainly a very essential part of understanding and doing mathematics. I think that's, that's clear. It's very hard to explain. I don't think, <laughs> I think that's way beyond anything I could try and define. <laughs> but uh, it certainly is, uh, it's one of the reasons, one of the key reasons one does mathematics is, is the beauty in the subject. There's also a fact, it seems to be a fact, that the laws that very closely <clears throat> govern the activity of the physical world have their own kind of beauty. Uh, you could say, well, maybe we only find them because they're beautiful, but there seems to be something more to it than that. Uh, these things are mysteries. I'm not saying I can explain any of them, but it does seem to be the case that there is a very subtle kind of beauty in the kinds of laws which s seem to govern the, f the forces, forces of, the, of the universe. Characterize something that would be beautiful. What, what causes a mathematical equation or a physical law to be beautiful or more beautiful than another? Well, certainly symmetry is one of the characteristics. If you see something which has a certain symmetry, it gives it a, a kind of beautiful character. I, I think there's something in saying uh, that what's beautiful in mathematics tends to be when things seem to be turn out to be simpler than you expect. Mm. So you, you think a problem has a, has a very complicated and that's all there is to it. And then suddenly you see there's some symmetry mm. about it and some structure. And that makes you feel pleased. Now, I mean, you could say, well, you're pleased because you sort of understand it when you didn't before. And, and this gives you this feeling of beauty. Or is there something deeper in, in it? which the beauty is somehow in it. I mean, like, these are questions I don't think I could begin to answer, really. <laughs> but uh, it, it's certainly true that beautiful things are more likely to be true in mathematics than the ugly things. It's often you're, you're taken by surprise and the beautiful things don't work. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not a reliable guide completely, but it's a very important guide and a very useful one to say, well, if you say which of these two things is more likely to be true, that's beautiful. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> it's more likely the beautiful one's going to be true. Now, you might be wrong. Oh, yeah. So it's not a, a reliable guide, but it's a, a, a good guide. And what are some examples that in, in your career or, or your sense of mathematics that have been particularly evocative to you personally in terms of beauty in, in, in mathematics or physical law? Well, often it's uh, geometrical things. I tend to think in a very geometrical way. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Things like, uh, well, I suppose the thing that's most accessible to people here are these, these tilings, which have uh, uh, sort of fivefold symmetry, which is you're used to patterns on the plane, which have twofold or threefold or fourfold or sixfold symmetry. They're the standard crystallographic symmetries. But you can produce patterns which have, have fivefold symmetry and almost uniformity. So they, they look very, very regular, but they have an impossible symmetry from the crystallographic point of view. There are theorems which tell you you can't have fivefold, but nevertheless, you can have these sort of interplay between something which is exactly symmetrical and not quite. And, and it has uh, uh, that there's a there's a certain amount of beauty in in things being not quite symmetrical. Oh, you see, oh, but yeah. they have, but the de in the deviation from the symmetry, you see some other structure and some other pattern which somehow can have quite a lot of elegance to it. So what happens, ah, that's an interesting new word, elegance. Elegance is often used by mathematicians. Yes, I, think, yes, I know. Work, and so yes. so how, how do you, how do you uh, either contrast or, or relate elegance and beauty? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> In mathematics, is, uh, is it the same thing? That's a tough one. Not quite, I don't think they're quite the same. Elegance is a word that is, as I say, is often used by mathematicians. I'm not sure I can. <laughs> Elegance, make it clear. Is a, maybe it's a simplicity, and beauty yes. is, a, is, is a more personal yes. emotion that you get. <laughs> yes, elegance that does 
there is a kind of refinement about it, I suppose, that that's, that one sees in mathematics. I guess the refinement is is mm. is what one seeks in the mathematical. Beauty is often quite sophisticated. I mean, it's not something that stands, that sh sort of shouts at you. You have to, you have to understand it before you see. What you said was interesting. That beauty is simplicity, but sometimes there is a a um, uh, like a theme and variation. That there's a a change in symmetry. It's not perfectly symmetrical. It's almost symmetrical, and that that deviation from some, the mm. symmetric enables other things to happen. So yes, it involves both yes. the symmetry and the subtle asymmetry? Yes, and the asymmetry probably has some character. It's not just asymmetrical. Yeah, you see, yeah, yeah. There is something, you follow that route and you see there's something deeper going on, which explains why it's not completely symmetrical in the most obvious sense. But it has a deeper symmetry, which you don't see at first. Oh. And that, that kind of thing can be uh, very satisfying. If you come across something like this, it can be a really thrilling experience. So if, if these characteristics of, of beauty, symmetry, elegance are embedded within mathematics and indeed in physical law, not all, as you've said, but can, what does that tell us about the, the nature of reality? Can we, it, it, does something follow from that? Probably. <laughs> I think it's, I mean, these are very deep questions and, and I think it's very difficult to, at least at my stage of understanding, to... But that's to why I'm coming to yes. you. <laughs> uh, I mean, what it is that is that is is the essence of beauty or elegance or so on is very hard to get hold of. And it's not just symmetry. I mean, symmetry is certainly something which can be beautiful. You see this in sort of platonic solids, and you see, isn't it nice? You look at this, and it's really the same, whichever way you look at it. And is that beauty just because, okay, I only have to look at a small part of it, and by knowing the symmetry, I can extend that to the whole thing? Or is there something else there, which is really why it's beautiful? Yeah. I think it's unexpected relationships and things like that, which often needn't be symmetry, but you suddenly see things line up in ways that you hadn't thought of before. And that can have quite, a, a, quite a, a, an aesthetic appeal. And how does that reflect upon the nature of mathematics in general? Well, I guess it's, it's hard to separate the fact that people do it because they seek beauty. Um, and therefore, the mathematics that you find is likely to be more beautiful. Because I don't that's think, what they're seeking. Yes, I don't think that's the full explanation. Mm. I think uh, there is beauty in there. And, and it, it also goes along with depth. I mean, there are certain mathematical things which are deep in the sense that there's a lot more to it. I mean, I, I think a good example, I've always felt a good example are, the, are the, these things called complex numbers. Mm. You take the ordinary real numbers, that you know, distance is a long line, if you like, and then you ask about, well, what's the square root of minus one? You say, well, there isn't one, you see. <laughs> but then you say, no, you could, if you say that there is a number, which is the square root of minus one, and then you see this line spreads out in a whole plane, and it has all sorts of incredible properties that you have no reason to expect. Not just you have a square root of minus one, you have square root of any number there. And, and not only square roots, you know, you can have a zillionth root or whatever you like, you see. And much more subtle things than that. And somehow the, that mathematical structure, which is not so hard to describe initially, and then you see it's got these hidden depths to it. And there's so much more which come out which you had no idea were there. And they're all in the mathematics. And it's somehow doing a lot for you that, that, that you had no idea, no reason to believe in the first place. So when you got into it, when you created this, what you thought was a simple idea, That's right. it had a, a, a depth and th that was always there. It was always there and you somehow brought it, brought it to light by things which in sometimes are awfully quite simple little things. And, and the really powerful, beautiful things are the ones where which this, all this hidden depth which you hadn't kind of realized at first. It's, it's there in the mathematics. It's not put there by us. I suppose that's the, that's the difference between the beauty in mathematics and, and in art, where, okay, in art you see, despite you know Michelangelo saying his statue was there in the rock all the time and he was only revealing it, you see, somehow he, he's doing it, you yeah, see. Sure. Whereas in mathematics, you're revealing it. It's, it's, it's there all the time. You're doing your best to kind of bring that beauty out 
And okay, there may be subtle, clever things you can do, which are in little tricks, and they may have beauty of their own, but the real beauty is there in the mathematics. Or I might use, use the term God-given, you see. Yeah. It's, it's, it's somehow we're revealing it rather than creating it.